डायसेक्राइड आज की वीडियो में डिस्कस करेंगे वी आर डूइंग चैप्टर नंबर टू फ्रॉम सत्यनारायण ऑफ बायोकेमिस्ट्री और uh, आज बात करेंगे आफ्टर द मोनोसेक्राइड विच वी डेड इन द लास्ट वीडियो टूडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट डायसेक्राइड एंड ऑल्सो पर हैव अबाउट पॉलिसेक्राइड विल सी हाउ इट गोज एंड देन इफ वी हैव इनफ टाइम वील ऑल्सो कवर पॉलिसेक्राइड सो अमंग्स दी ऑलिगोसेक्राइड डायसेक्राइड आर मोस्ट कॉमन सो ऑलिगोसेक्राइड का जो टर्म है दैट इज समथिंग दैट वी यूज जब बात मोनोसेक्राइड से आगे निकल जाए यानी इफ वी हैव मोनोसेक्राइड सच एज ग्लूकोज फ्रक्टोज इफ देर आर टू टू नाइन और टेन मोनोसेक्राइड लिंक टूगेदर देन इज द वर्ड दैट वी कॉल इट ऑलिगोसेक्राइड और डायसेक्राइड का मतलब यह है कि एक मोनोसेक्राइड एंड दूसरा मोनोसेक्राइड दे आर लिंक टूगेदर सो दे टू मोनोसेक्राइड लिंक टूगेदर एज इट इज एविडेंट फ्रॉम द नेम डायसेक्राइड कंजिस्ट ऑफ टू मोनोसेक्राइड यूनिट्स एंड दे आर हेल्थ टूगेदर इनके बीच में जो बॉन्ड है उसको हम नाम देते हैं ग्लाइकोसाइडिक बॉन्ड बिल्कुल वैसे ही जैसे अमाइनो एसिड्स के बीच में पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड होता है नाउ डाइसेक्राइड आर क्रिस्टलाइन वाटर सोल्यूबल एंड स्वीट टू टेस्ट सो ये बीचे है शुगर जो हम आमतौर पर वर्ड यूज करते हैं वो केमिकल अगर उसका हम नाम लें सो दैट इज सुक्रोज एंड यू नो दैट सुक्रोज इज स्वीट टू टेस्ट नाउ दे कैन बी क्लासिफाइड नंबर वन इन टू रिड्यूजिंग डाइसेक्राइड्स With free aldehyde or a keto group, or in the example here, uh, maltose and lactose, and they can be non-reducing. So basically, they are classified on the basis of their chemical reaction. So if they can reduce, they have free aldehyde or keto group, and that's why they can reduce because they have the free uh, functional groups. And if they are non-reducing, then their keto or the aldehyde group is busy it's not free aur iski example mein hai typically jo hum use karte hain sucrose and trehalose so sucrose jo uh, i mean bahut zyada iska consumption hai it is one of the most uh, heavily used chemical throughout the world sucrose chini jisko hum kehte hain shakar jisko hum kehte hain to ye aap chai mein dalte hain meethi cheezon mein dalte hain so that's a non reducing disaccharide okay ab hum in uh, kuch jo ki डाइसेक्राइड uh, हैं उनके बारे में डिस्कशन करना है तो फर्स्ट वन ऑफ देम इज माल्टोज रिमेंबर फ्रॉम दिस क्लासिफिकेशन ग्रेड के माल्टोज इज अ रिड्यूसिंग डाइसेक्राइड इट इज कम्पोज ऑफ टू ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल सो वन ग्लूकोज लिंक टू दी अदर ग्लूकोज एंड द बॉन्ड बिटवीन दैम इज द वन फोर ग्लाइकोसाइरिक बॉन्ड सो टू ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल टूगेदर इज अ माल्टोज और चूंकि ये रिड्यूसिंग शुगर है सो इट विल हैव अ फ्री एल्डी हाइड ग्रोफ or free free keto group that's by definition reducing sugars have so maltose have free aldehyde group because isme glucose has so aldehyde group uh, now you know mere previous agar aapne lectures dekhe hain to aapko pata hai ki glucose contains the aldehyde group so the free aldehyde group present on carbon 1 of second glucose is, uh, answers the reducing reactions besides the osazone formation ye bhi humne uh, previous videos mein discuss kiya so in order to understand what is an osazone uh, watch my monosaccharide video ओके, बट इस पूरे टेक्स्ट का टेक होम बेसिकली इतना ही है कि आपको ये पता हो दो चीजें दो इंफॉर्मेशन विच आर क्रिटिकली इंपॉर्टेंट कि मोल्टोज इज मेड अप ऑफ टू ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल्स वन एंड नंबर टू द बॉन्ड बिटवीन द टू ग्लूकोज मॉलिक्यूल्स इज वन फोर ग्लाइकोसाइरिक बॉन्ड ओके सो दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन इन आइजो माल्टोज द ग्लूकोज यूनिट्स आर हेल्ड टूगेदर बाय वन सिक्स सो दैट्स अ वेरिएंट ऑफ माल्टोज एंड यू शुड नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन माल्टोज एंड आइजो माल्टोज सेलोबायोज इज एन दाइसेक्राइड आइडेंटिकल इन स्ट्रक्चर टू माल्टोज एक्सेप्ट दैट द फॉर्मर यानी सेलोबायोज Uh, has beta one four linkage instead of alpha one four. So there are different flavors that are associated with maltose. You should know the terminology maltose. Then you should know what is isomaltose, and then you should know what is cellobiose. Okay, and the key differences between them. Now, what is sucrose? Sucrose is the sugar cane of uh, commerce. mostly produced by sugar cane and sugar beet so basically i mean this is the sugar of commerce me <laughs> that is a huge molecule ye bahut main aapse kehna is one of the heavily used chemicals throughout the world so sochiye iska financial impact even iske health impact bahut zyada hai and it is made up of a molecule of glucose and fructose और अगर फर्दर डिटेल्स आपको पता करनी है तो अल्फा जी ग्लूकोज एंड बीटा जी फ्रोक्टोज ओके एंड नाउ यू शुड नो मेरे अगर मोनोसेक्राइड्स की वीडियो आपने देखी है सो यू शुड नो व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय डी ग्लूकोज व्हाट इज डेक्सट्रो व्हाट इज अल्फा सो दीस टर्मिनोलॉजीज आई एम नॉट गोना गो इनटू द डिटेल्स अगेन बट सुक्रोज कंटेन्स वन ग्लूकोज एंड वन फ्रोक्टोज एंड द टू मोनोसेक्राइड्स आर हेल्ड टुगेदर बाय ग्लाइकोसाइरिक अल्फा 1 बीटा 2 बॉन्ड्स और दैट इज अनदर पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन व्हिच इज इंपॉर्टेंट द रिड्यूसिंग एंड दे दे व्हाट Do you think it will be? Is it going to be 
uh, are reducing or non reducing sugar so if you remember this initial classification grade sucrose was non reducing iska matlab ye hai ki iske paas free aldehyde keto group nahi hoga so the reducing group of the glucose and fructose are involved in making the bond yani yahan agar ek glucose hai aur ye fructose hai to inke groups aapas mein bond banane mein busy ho gaye therefore it does not have non reducing uh, it does not have the reducing sugar uh, functional groups because they do not have the reducing functional groups they are non reducing sugars so basically simple baat hai yaar ki agar mere paas uh, if this is a glucose molecule iske paas aldehyde group hai this is a fructose molecule iske paas keto group hai aur ye bond banane mein aapas mein utilize ho gaye so they are engaged with each other since they are engaged with each other they do not have free aldehyde or keto group to uh, reduce something else therefore these are non reducing sugars okay so ye theory thodi si aapko batani chahiye sucrose is an important source of dietary carbohydrate it is sweeter than most of the common sugars except fructose which is heavily uh, even sweeter than uh, sucrose sucrose is employed as a sweetening agent in the food industry the intestinal enzyme sucrase hydrolyzes sucrose to glucose and fructose which are absorbed in the body and then glucose is handled in the body by insulin you know that in version of sucrose sucrose such as uh, dextro rotatory uh, ye iski uh, inherent property hai uh, by definition uh, it is inherently uh, dextro rotatory compound but when hydrolyzed sucrose becomes levo rotatory एंगल्स याद रखना जरूरी नहीं है द प्रोसेस ऑफ चेंज इन ऑप्टिकल रोटेशन फ्रॉम डेक्सट्रो रोटेटरी टू लेवर रोटेटरी इज रेफर टू एज द प्रोसेस ऑफ इनवर्जन द हाइड्रोलाइज मिक्सचर ऑफ सुक्रोज कंटेनिंग ग्लूकोज एज वेल एज फ्रक्टोज is known as invert sugar so obviously uh, sucrose glucose and fructose se milke bana hai if the hydrolysis is uh, present and they are now in the form of two monosaccharides the solution is known as invert sugar because wo dextrose level configuration mein convert ho sakta hai um, not very high yield i would say but anyways likha to maine bata diya now hydrolysis of sucrose by enzyme sucrase um, or dilute acids which means dilute acids can also hydrolyze sucrose liberate one molecule of glucose and fructose obviously we know this that there is one molecule of glucose and fructose in the structure uh, the rest of the things are not too important it is postulated that sucrose is first split into bullshit i don't care about this okay um, i would like to focus biochemistry already is a dry subject so if you read it carefully uh, for those things which are important for you to remember for your examination and for your clinical practice i focus more on those stuff okay so what is lactose ab tak maine jitne bhi aapko disaccharides ke naam bataye hain unki composition yaad rakhna lazmi hai so you should know what is maltose composed of for example you must know what is sucrose composed of for example and now the lactose lactose is made up of two monosaccharides one is known as galactose and the other one is known as glucose and their bond is al- uh, beta 1 4 okay that's the important piece of information that you must remember lactose of milk is the most important carbohydrate for nutrition particularly in young mammals dood mein hota hai lactose it is hydrolyzed by the intestinal enzyme lactase or kai logo mein agar ye nahi hota to fir hum usse kehte hain ki lactose intolerance hai wo isko handle nahi kar pate isko digest nahi kar pate lactulose kya cheez hai it's a synthetic disaccharide so ab tak hum jo baat kar rahe the unse aur isme difference ye hai ki it's a synthetic one it is made up of galactose and fructose rather than galactose and glucose it is neither digested nor absorbed in the intestine to fir iska kaam kya hai lactulose is useful for the treatment of hepatic encephalopathy a disorder characterized by elevated plasma ammonia levels hota ye hai ki jo lactulose phir in patients ko dete hain jinme hepatic encephalopathy hai high levels of ammonium hai uh, lactulose converts ammonia in the lumen to ammonium ion this results in the reduction of the plasma ammonia level since ammonia ion are not easily absorbed and basically you are using this synthetic compound to dilute the levels of ammonia in patients with hepatic encephalopathy okay now let's talk about the polysaccharides polysaccharides are also known as glycans or jaise disaccharide the usme do units the one unit and the other unit they are joined together by a glycosidic bond if you have multiple monosaccharides then you call it a polysaccharide simple stuff polysaccharide multiple monosaccharides okay they are linear molecules as well as branch polymers depending upon abhi hum kuch examples in ki dekhenge this is in contrast to the structure of proteins and nucleic acids which are only linear so proteins initially made are linear but carbohydrates can be branched as well the occurrence of branches in polysaccharides is due to the fact that the glycosidic linkages 
can be formed at any one of the hydroxyl group so depending upon kis uh, hydroxyl group ke sath nayi uh, carbon ki bonding start ho rahi hai there can be branches polysaccharides ko generally they can disaccharides ki general classification kya thi they were divided into reducing sugars and non reducing sugars and now the polysaccharides they are generally divided into homo polysaccharides and hetero polysaccharides homo polysaccharides on hydrolysis yani jab unka breakdown hoga they yield only single type of monosaccharide um aur jo hetero polysaccharide hain they will generate a mixture of a uh, few monosaccharides or their derivatives homo polysaccharides are named based on the nature of the monosaccharide so for example glucans are polymers of glucose fructosans are polymers of fructose so yani agar ye jo sare monosaccharides hain if they are all glucose 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 and glucose so they are all called uh, collectively this is called homo polysaccharide kyunki isme sare monosaccharide ek jaise hain so the term used for them is homo polysaccharide or because ye glucose se milke bana hai iska naam hoga uh, glucan isi tarah agar fructose units honge to fructosan ठीक है लेकिन अगर हेट्रोपोलीसेक्राइड की बात करें तो उसमें हो सकता है एक यूनिट ग्लूकोज हो दूसरा फ्रक्टोज हो तीसरा कोई और चीज हो फिर ग्लूकोज इट्स मिक्सचर ऑफ डिफरेंट मोनोसेक्राइड्स अब कुछ होमोपोलीसेक्राइड्स की एग्जांपल्स मुझे डिस्कस करनी है एंड देन वी विल जंप ऑन टू अ फ्यू हेट्रोपोलीसेक्राइड ओके एंड दैट्स ऑल अबाउट दिस चैप्टर देन सो होमोपोलीसेक्राइड में पहला है स्टार्च अब आपको बाई डेफिनेशन ये बात मालूम है कि वेन वी से होमोपोलीसेक्राइड इनमें से जो मोनोसेक्राइड्स निकलेंगे वो सब एक जैसे होंगे स्टार्च इज अ कार्बोहाइड्रेट रिजर्व ऑफ द प्लांट्स व्हिच इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डायट्री सोर्स फॉर हायर एनिमल्स इट्स वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सोर्स ओके इंक्लूडिंग मैन हमारे लिए भी हाई कंटेंट ऑफ स्टार्च इज फाउंड इन सीरियल्स रूट्स ट्यूबर्स वेजिटेबल्स दालों में है सब्जियों में है स्टार्च इज अ होमोपोलीमर मेड अप ऑफ व्हाट डी ग्लूकोज एंड द यूनिट्स आर ऑल हेड टुगेदर बाय अल्फा ग्लाइकोसाइलिक बॉन्ड इट इज आल्सो नोन एज ग्लूकोजेन और ग्लूकैन यहां भी मैं ये बात कर रहा था कि अगर ग्लूकोज के यूनिट्स आपस में जुड़े हैं बहुत सारे देन दे आर कलेक्टिवली नोन एज ग्लूकैंस सो ग्लूकैन टर्म आपको पता होनी चाहिए ओके सो डी ग्लूकोज से मिलके ये लंबा सा पॉलीमर बनता है व्हिच इज ग्लूकोजेन या ग्लूकोएन ऑल मेड अप ऑफ ग्लूकोज देयरफॉर होमो पॉलीसेक्राइड A starch consists of two polysaccharide components: water-soluble uh, uh, amylose and a water-insoluble amylopectin. These two starch are different. You uh, understand that side chains are. Chemically, the water-soluble component, that is amylose, is a long unbranched chain um, with 200 to 1,000 glucose units held together by alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds. And the amylopectin, on the other hand, is branched, and its bonding is different. Hai. It is alpha 16 glycosidic bond okay so these are important points amylopectin molecule contains a few thousand glucose units look like a branched tree um so the structure of starch is basically aapko jo jo baatein yaad rakhne ki hain wo ye hai ki it is all made up of glucose isme do tarah ke units hain soluble insoluble soluble portion ko hum naam dete hain amylose jo alpha 14 glycosidic bonds hain amylopectin mein alpha 16 amylosidic uh, glycosidic bonds hain and the amylopectin portion is uh, responsible for the branching pattern okay so uh, these are all important and relevant stuff ab inki hydrolysis kaise hoti hai ye toote kaise hain starches they are hydrolyzed by amylases so amylases are present in saliva as well as in pancreas so when you eat starch this is the enzyme which digest starch into ultimately which unit glucose unit okay starch is made up of glucose theek hai and amylase is specifically going to break 14 glycosidic bond 14 glycosidic bond yani starch ka kaun sa component amylose component ko ye break karega okay because wahi pe hote hain 14 glycosidic bonds the next homo polysaccharide is dextrin obviously ye bhi kisi ek cheez ka milke bana hoga na dextrins are the breakdown products of starch yani dextrin bhi kisi cheez ke milke bane honge glucose ke because ye starch ka breakdown product hai aur starch glucose se banta hai to ye bhi glucose se hi bane honge aur ye us waqt bante hain jab इनकी हाइड्रोलिसिस होती है बाय अमाइलेज और डाइल्यूट एसिड्स स्टार्च इज सीक्वेंशियली हाइड्रोलाइज थ्रू डिफरेंट डेक्सट्रेंस एंड फाइनली टू द माल्टोज एंड देन ग्लूकोज देखो बात ये है कि अगर ये मेरे पास सपोज स्टार्च मॉलिक्यूल है ठीक है ना जिसमें ब्रांचिंग भी है अच्छा ब्रांचिंग पे बॉन्ड है 16 ग्लाइकोसाइड 
اور اسٹریٹ جو بانڈ بنا ہوا ہے ڈفرینٹ گلوکوز یونٹس کے درمیان وہ ون فور گلائکوسائرک یونٹ ہے تو جو امائلیز ہے وہ اس ون فور یونٹ کو توڑے گا تو ہو سکتا ہے انیشیل ڈائجیشن پر میرے پاس ایک کمپوننٹ اس طرح بنے دوسرا کمپوننٹ اس طرح بنے ایک کمپوننٹ یہ ملے تو یہ ڈفرینٹ پروڈکٹس ہیں دس از اسٹارچ دس از دا بگر مالیکیول اینڈ ناؤ دس بگر مالیکیول از ڈیوائیڈڈ انٹو اسمالر یونٹس اور یہ جو اسمالر یونٹس ہیں ان کو ہم نام دیتے ہیں ڈیکسٹرینس اچھا یہ ڈیکسٹرین پر فردر ڈیوائیڈ ہوگا ڈائی سیکرائڈ میں اور ڈائی سیکرائڈ گلوکوز اور گلوکوز والا کیا کہلاتا ہے مالٹوز اور الٹیمیٹلی پھر یہ بریک ڈاؤن ہوگا ایک گلوکوز الگ اور ایک گلوکوز الگ تو یہ بریک ڈاؤن اس طرح سے ہوتا ہے تو بیچ میں جو انٹرمیڈیٹ پروڈکٹس بنتے ہیں دیز انٹرمیڈیٹ پروڈکٹس آر نون ایز ڈیکسٹرینس اوکے نا دا ویریس انٹرمیڈیٹ آر سولیبل اسٹارچ امائلو ڈیکسٹرینس ایریترو ڈیکسٹرینس اینڈ ایکرو سو دیز اے کلر کوڈ از ناٹ سو امپورٹنٹ فار یو ٹو ریمبر بٹ دس کانسیپٹ از سپر امپورٹنٹ کہ ہاؤ دے آر بروکن ڈاؤن ایکچولی اوکے ڈیکسٹرانس کیا چیز ہے دے آر پالیمرز آف گلوکوز ایز ویل پروڈیوسڈ بائی مائکرو آرگینزم سو نوٹ دا ڈفرینس بٹوین دا ٹرمینالوجی ڈیکسٹرین ڈیکسٹران دے آر یوز ایز پلازما والیوم ایکسپینڈر ان ٹرانسفیوژن اینڈ کروماٹوگرافی جیل انفلٹریشن بیسیکلی اگر کسی کا بی پی بہت تیزی سے لو ہو رہا ہے دے آر لوزنگ والیوم یو انفیوز ڈیکسٹران بیکاز دے ایکسپینڈ دا والیوم بائی آسمارک تھنگس اوکے اٹس اے ڈفرینٹ تھنگ اٹ از اے سنتھیرک تھنگ آلسو میڈ سنتھیریکلی بیسک اس کا پرنسپل ہے کہ اٹس اے مائکروبیل پروڈکٹ دین واٹ از انیولین انیولین از اے پالیمر آف فرکٹوز جیسے اسٹارچ از اے پالیمر آف گلوکوز انیولین از اے پالیمر آف فرکٹوز اور اسی لیے اس انیولین کا دوسرا نام ہے فرکٹوزین سو آئی کال اٹ فرکٹوزین اور انیولین از دا سیم تھنگ اٹ اگرز ان ڈیلیا بلبس گارلک آنین یہ ان کی سورسز ہیں پالی سیکرائڈ ایزیلی سولیبل ان واٹر انیولین از ناٹ یوٹیلائز بائی دا باڈی اٹ از یوز فار ایسنگ کڈنی فنکشن جی ایف آر کے لیے یہ جب ہم کڈنی کی فیزیولوجی کرتے ہیں تب اس کا انولین کلیئرنس کی ہم بات کرتے ہیں بٹ اینی ویز یو شوڈ نو دیٹ اٹ از اے فرکٹوز پالیما دین دا ویری فیمس گلائکوجین اٹس اے کاربوہائیڈریٹ ریزرو آف یور باڈی اور اینیمل اسٹارچ جسے ہم کہتے ہیں اٹ از آلسو میڈ اپ آف گلوکوز اوکے اٹ از پریزنٹ ان ہائی کانسنٹریشن ان لیور مسل ایز ویل ایز برین is also found in the plants that do not possess chlorophyll gene mein nahi hota particularly and this is also made up of glucose glucose is the building block uh, and they are joined together by alpha 14 glycosidic bonds starch ki tarah ki kahani lag rahi hai hai na and 16 at the branching point so if you look here this diagram so that's the branching point 16 bond will be here ye sab black 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 ye glucose hai and blue because it is the branching point yahan pe bond different hai baki sab ka bond uh, 14 glycosidic bond hai okay then cellulose is another homopolysaccharide cellulose is uh, uh, usually present in plants and is the most abundant organic substance in plant kingdom cellulose cell wall mein bhi hota hai na it is a predominant constituent of the cell wall cellulose is totally absent in the animal body it is composed of also glucose beta 14 glycosidic bonds theek hai cellulose cannot be digested by mammals hum ise digest nahi kar sakte due to lack of the enzyme which is required to break the beta 14 bond isliye if you eat uh, cellulose it's not broken down certain ruminants and herbivorous animals contain microorganisms in the gut which can produce this enzyme and they can actually handle cellulose we cannot Hydrolysis of cellulose yields cellobiose. This we have already discussed on this. And ultimately, beta-D-glucose. Cellulose, though not digested, has a great importance in human nutrition. Now, you will say that we can digest it, because we don't have a beta-1,4-glycosidic bond to break beta-1,4-glycosidic bond. So, we cannot digest it. Since we cannot digest it, we cannot digest it. Since we cannot digest it, what is the purpose of eating cellulose? It's, uh, so say for example, this is your GI tract, your stomach and then intestine and everything. So you eat a lot of vegetables and by definition, if you are eating vegetable, you are eating a lot of cellulose. So the cellulose gets in into your GI tract. It is not digested, but it is a very important fiber constituent. So it helps you produce normal bulky fibrous stools, which is very healthy for diet. Okay. Then chitin is another homopolysaccharide. It's composed of glucosamine. Uh, which are held together by beta-1,4 linkages. Um, and it is a structural polysaccharide found in exoskeleton of some invertebrates, insects and crustaceans. So, these are all the names we have discussed, starting right from uh, the first one, which was starch, then to the dextrins, dextrans, glycogen, ilunin. They are all polysaccharides and they are made up of uh, uh, any one particular type of um, 
monosaccharide in most cases it was glucose did you know this in most cases it was glucose yani jab unka breakdown hoga to ultimately aapko sirf glucose hi milega but if the breakdown is in a way that you get glucose and something else then we call it heteropolysaccharide and these heteropolysaccharides are or heteroglycans are these number 1 first category mucopolysaccharides they are heteroglycans made up of repeating units of sugar derivatives namely amino sugars and uronic acids you see now the complicated stuff coming in simple monosaccharides nahi hai yani aisa nahi hai ki jab ye break ho to aapko sirf glucose mil jayega no they are composed of amino sugars and uronic acids these are more commonly known as glycosaminoglycans very important compounds in human physiology acetylated acetylated amino acid besides sulfate and carbon so this is not important stuff but remember glycosaminoglycans are heteropolysaccharides some of the muco mucopolysaccharides are found in combination with proteins also to form mucoprotein or mucoid so they are not merely pure carbohydrates they are complex stuff guys so they are complex stuff they contain things even other than carbohydrates such as proteins such as other complex carbohydrate derivatives okay right so this is one category mucopolysaccharides you see uh, this is an example of a complex proteoglycan containing hyaluronic acid proteins carbohydrate and what not okay so let's move on to the mucopolysaccharides are essential components of tissue structure the extracellular space tissue such as in the strength providing parts of your body particularly the cartilage the bony tissues as well the tendons they consist of collagen and elastin fibers embedded in a matrix or ground substance the ground substance contains predominantly the mucopolysaccharide so inka basic role jo hai body mein that is support and strengthening the important mucopolysaccharides include hyaluronic acid chondroitin sulfate heparin dramin so all very important compounds basically uh, made up of uh, polysaccharides but also contain protein and other moieties then hyaluronic acid ab sab pe thodi thodi si baat hame karni hai is an important uh, heteropolysaccharide aur hum baat kar rahe hain heteropolysaccharide group ki jisme we are talking about glycosaminoglycans so this gag is the glycosaminoglycans okay found in the ground substance of the synovial fluid hyaluronic acid and also in the vitreous humor of the eye it is also present as a ground substance in connective tissues so you imagine these are the ground substances which are important for the basic stability of that these organs synovial fluid vitreous of the eye hyaluronic acid serves as a lubricant and a shock absorber so pretty important uh, role for these important compounds Hyaluronic acid is composed of alternate units of D-glucuronic acid and N-acetyl glucosamine. अब अगर आप इन molecules का you know analysis, you don't have to remember all these complex structures, but the basic idea, you see, at the base of it are carbohydrates. So glucuronic acid, obviously glucose involvement, as glucosamine, obviously glucose involvement, but they are derivatives. They are not simple glucose or fructose. They are derived compounds. So there is an N-acetyl group at attached to Uh, the glucosamine thing the two molecules form disaccharide units held together by beta 1 3 linkages hyaluronic acid contains about itna sara disaccharide units with a molecular weight of about 4 million so it's a heavy compound and the enzyme hyaluronidase can break this beta 1 4 bond and it will yield these two compounds jinse ye milke bana hai okay this enzyme is present in high concentration in testicles seminal fluid and in certain snake and insect venoms now you imagine uh, why these compounds have this enzyme because when they have to go and fertilize an ovum for example sperms need these and therefore the seminal fluid will help digest the ground substance around the ovum okay this is a very important one for fertilization for example now chondroitin sulfate is another example of a heteropolysaccharide it's a major constituent of mammalian tissue such as bone cartilage so uh, really provide big support and it is made up of repeating disaccharide units containing d glucuronic acid and n acetyl glucosamine for sulfate so na sunne naam lag rahe hain d glucuronic acid and acetyl d glucosamine so similar molecules making chondroitin sulfate because there is now at the four position sulfate group available as well heparin comes in this category as well heparin is a heteropolysaccharide i ask many student because heparin is a very commonly used molecule ye blood coagulation profile complete nahi hoti agar aap baat na kare heparin ki main aksar logo se puchta hu what is heparin and the answer i get is it's a protein no it's not it's a heteropolysaccharide it's an anticoagulant 
uh, that occurs in the blood, lung, liver, and kidney, also spleen. Heparin helps in the release of enzyme lipoprotein lipase, which help in clearing the turbidity of the lipase. So there are so many different functions of heparin, I can argue, but we will deal with those when we are doing physio or medicine. But at the moment, please remember it's a heteropolysaccharide. Dermarin sulfate, skin made, dermarin skin, okay, and related to chondroitin 4 sulfate. Uh, the only difference is that they don't have to remember it's not high yield just remember the name not high yield by any chance okay right so it's a summary of glycosamine glycans their composition their tissue distribution and their function so if you're talking about hyaluronic acid that's how it is made made up of these two compounds yani jab iski hydrolysis hogi to ye niklenge kahan kahan ye hote hain aur inke kaam kya hain so go through the table and it will cover whatever we have discussed in the text just there that's an important table by the way you should know the name of the glycosamine glycans and then their distribution their composition and their function okay what is keratin sulfate it's also a glycosamine gly available so you go through this keratin sulfate made up of these two things present in cartilage cornea connective tissue and it keeps the cornea transparent is the job okay so remember this table and then you are fine agar mostly found in seaweeds is a polymer of galactose sulfate and glucose since agar is not digested it serves as a dietary fiber as well just like cellulose cellulose bhi jaise dietary fiber ke taur pe kaam karta hai ye bhi isi tarah kaam karta hai agarose is useful in laboratory se hum gel banate hain aur dna aur bahut sare aur tarah ke jisme electrophoresis karni hoti hai yani different weight ke particles ko separate karna hota hai uski gel banti hai jelly like material hai ye agarose is used in the labs quite a lot pectin found in the apples and citrus fruit contains galacto uronate and rhamnose pectins being not digestible are also useful dietary fiber so basically bahut sari synthetic cheeze jo hoti hain unme ye uh, sab use kiya jata hai taki uh, synthetically fibers ka intake body mein badhaya jaye so that uh, diarrhea ka you know remedy kiya ja sake and the uh, you know bowel habits are then improved now what is the terminology glycoprotein as the name indicates there are carbohydrates and proteins linked together so glyco is for carbohydrates and protein is obviously for protein and their combination is the glycoprotein the carbohydrate content of glycoprotein varies from 1 to 90% by weight yani kabhi carbohydrate component zyada hoga kabhi protein component zyada hoga things like that and uh, that's the important thing for that this is a good table uh, telling you some glycoproteins and their function so collagen for example is not merely pure protein it contains carbohydrate component as well hydrolase is protease is ceruloplasmin immunoglobulin synovial glycoprotein so many of them you may think are pure proteins but actually they are glycoprotein so i would rate this table in terms of importance a super important table so remember their functions and functions pe to khairal hum physio mein bahut detail mein baat karenge har ek compound par but to me this is important because you should know these are not pure proteins many students thinks they are pure proteins they are not pure protein molecules okay they are glycoprotein molecules so very important piece of information for you right so uh, let's move ahead uh, actually there was one thing which i wanted to discuss the carbohydrates found in the glycoproteins include mannose galactose and acetyl glucosamine and acetyl galaxamine ye sara jo glyco component hai wo ye log hain jo in proteins ke sath actually attach hote hain also n acetyl neuronic acid called nana isme aap dekhenge aapko glucose nahi milega so glucose is not uh, very happy to combine with the proteins in fact glucose amin milega aur glucose ke dusre derivatives milenge lekin khud glucose nahi milega okay antifreeze glycoproteins kya hai the antarctic fish lives below minus 2 degree because that's their normal habitat it's a temperature at which the blood would actually freeze it is now known that these fish contain is a special glycoprotein which you know does not allow their blood to freeze and they actually lower the freezing point such antifreeze glycoproteins contains usually 50 repeating units of tripeptide alanine alanine threonine so this alanine alanine threonine thing is the antifreeze compound okay each threonine residue is bound to beta galactosyl and and acetyl galactosamine so basically ye jo antifreeze hai it contains a protein component which is this and a carbohydrate component which is this so antifreeze is a glycoprotein blood group substances there are antigens you know a antigen b antigen o antigen ro antigen all these blood group antigens they are also glycolipids 
the N acetyl, galactosamine, galactose, fructose, salic acid, these are all the carbohydrate components for these antigens. Okay. So so you will have an idea there are a lot of things and blood group substances is one of them they are all glycoproteins they are not only proteins okay so that's actually all about this particular chapter so carbohydrate wala chapter complete hua aap se mulaqat hogi agle kisi chapter mein bahut jald apna khayal rakhiye